In this video, we're going to look at linear independence and spanning sets in terms of vector spaces. So the difference now is that we're in a vector space. Suppose V is a vector space. And if I can get a uh, coefficient multiplier or uh, an alpha 1 to alpha n in such a way that when I multiply those, the scalar multiplication of that scalar and my vector, and it equals zero, then we say that we are linearly dependent. So in other words, if I can set up my um, equations in such a way that my alphas are not equal to zero, then we know that they're linearly dependent. Similarly, if I set it up so that when I go to check for linear independence or dependence, if I set it up where my alphas are all have to be zero, that's the only way it would work out, then we say that they're linearly independent and we say they're in a vector space. We, remember we are doing scalar multiplication. So if we're asked to determine whether or not this set of um, vectors and this vector set is linearly independent, and, and we're looking at from 0 to 10. So we're looking at this interval from 0 to 10. So I, I have my scalar multipliers C1, C2, C3, and I multiply them by each one of my elements in my vector set. So C11, C2x, and C3x. Is, uh, e to the x is equal to 0. I'm going to go ahead and move the um, exponential part to the other side. And the only way this can be true, because this is an exponential, the only way this can be true is if my c sub 3 is equal to 0. So if I set that c sub 3 equal to 0, then I would have something that looks like this. I'd have c1 plus c2 is equal to 0, which means c1 has to equal c2. And the only way that happens is if they're both also equal to 0. So we see this set is linearly independent because there's no way I can have any um, scalar multiplier c1 to c3 that would work out unless everything was equal to zero. Let's take a look at uh, an example where in which we're looking at a polynomial set and we're asked to determine whether or not these three polynomials are linearly independent in the set of polynomials of degree three. So again, what we do is we set up the equations where I have my scalar multiplier, C1, by my first polynomial, my scalar multiplier, C2, by my second polynomial, my scalar multiplier, C3, by my third polynomial, and I set it equal to zero. I am going to um, combine up all of the coefficients on the x3 term. I'm going to combine up all the coefficients on the x2 term, so the x squared and the x cubed and then my x, my linear one, and then of course my constants. And I build this set of equations, and then when I build this set of equations and I put it into a matrix and a row reduced to echelon form like we're, we're familiar with at this point, we end up getting solutions of c1 is equal to three, c2 is equal to one, and c sub three is equal to negative two, which means they're not an independent, they're not a linearly independent set in my polynomials of degree three. Let's take a look at my next example here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to determine, I'm not, I'm not necessarily look, looking to see if they're linear independent because we have the span, we know we, know, we know we can check for linear independence. What I'm trying to determine now is whether or not a given polynomial is um, within the, the span, not the spanning set, but I want to know whether or not the spanning set that produces S um, will be inclusive of this polynomial P, and we're in polynomials of degree 2. So as before, this time though, instead of setting equal to 0 like I did up here, so up here I set my each one of my polynomials with the scalar multiplier, set it equal to 0. The difference now is I'm setting it equal to this polynomial that I'm trying to determine whether or not it is in within the span. Um, so I do my C1 by my first polynomial, my C2 by my second polynomial, and I set it equal to what I hope is in the span. And as before, what I do is I get my coefficients on my x squared together, my coefficients on my linear term together, and my, co and my constants. And then I set them equal to each other. So the coefficients on the x squared have to equal 10. The coefficients on my linear have to equal negative 17, and the coefficients that, or excuse me, my constants must equal 9. 
When I solve for this, my regular solving ways, I do get C1 is equal to 4 and C2 is equal to negative 3. Therefore, we know that this is within the span that is generated by this spanning set. And if I were asking whether or not I had three of these and I was determining whether or not they're linear or independent, we know they're not linear or independent because P can be um, produced by a scalar multiplication of those two um, vector elements. So let's take a look at another example here. Here's this example, and what we're asked to do on this one is we're asked to find the, the span is being defined as 1 cosine x and cosine 2x, and we're on the interval from 0 to pi. We want to determine whether or not this function sine squared x is within the span. In other words, I want to know, can I take a linear combination of these and produce this s uh, sine squared. So what I do is I kick back to my pre-calc 2 class, which said, wait a minute, I have a power reduction formula. Sine squared x is equal to 1 minus a cosine of 2x over 2. So I can rewrite the sine squared of x as 1 half 1, so there's my, there's my multiplier, minus 1 half, there's my multiplier, of the cosine of 2x, which is a linear combination of the two vectors in the span that I was given. That means that the sine squared x is within that spanning set. Let's take a look at this example where we are looking at this set of matrices in um, real entries. Remember, this means real entries, and this just tells me the size. So I'm looking at a set of vectors of matrices of size 2 by 2 in which the entries are real. So here is my three elements of my spanning set. Now I'm trying to determine whether or not this matrix is within the span. Not the spanning set, but just the span. So as before, I have my C sub 1 and my first matrix, my C sub 2 and my second matrix, C sub 3 and my third matrix, and I set it equal to the V, my, my, my element I'm hoping to determine whether or not is in the vector um, space, S. So I go ahead and I, and, I, and I do C1 and then C2 and then C3 and I combine up in the first entry in the 1, 1 position, I have C1 plus C4, C3. In the 1, 2 position, I have negative C2 plus C3. In the 2, 1 position, I end up with a 2, C1, a 1, C2, a negative 2, C3. See, that's where those come from. And then in my 2, 2 position, I have C1, 3, C2, and 1, C3. And they have to equal each other. And we know this from when we were looking at matrices and matrix operations, that each entry to, for these to be equal must be equal to each other. So we know that C sub 1 plus 4 C sub 3 has to equal to 2. And we end up building a matrix within a matrix. Yay! And we get this system of equations, and we try to solve for it, and we discover there is no solutions. So that tells me that that particular matrix is not an element of the span. So that spanning set is not going to generate that element V here, so it's not going to be a part of it. So let's do some more definitions. We have a definition of a spanning set of a vector space. V is a vector space. A subset S of V is a spanning set of V if and only if the, um, the set generated that produced the spanning set that produces S is equal to V. In this case, we frequently say S spans V. That's when we're going to start talking about whether or not polynomials are going to span um, all of P2 or if the vectors I'm looking at span all of R2, you know, um, or R3 or whatever. So this is setting us up for that. And then we have our last theorem, which is the theorem of vector representation relative to the basis. It says that V is a vector space. And my, my vectors B is a linear independent set that spans this. This is like my spanning set that is linearly independent. Now, we know that sometimes my spanning sets are not linearly independent, but, but if they are, and it is a linear independent set, and it spans that set, then we know that there exists a unique set of scalars that I can produce. I can get a unique set of scalars that can produce any 
um, vector within my set V, my vector space V, and it builds the basis. So in other words, if I have a spanning set that is linearly independent and it spans V, produces V, my spanning space or my vector space, then I know that is the basis. So that's what this is going to give us. And we do our next video and our next section when we're talking about basis, we're going to start finding what are appropriate basis for our vector spaces.